Hello, everybody, and, and welcome to another um, edition, another entry in our NPR Chamber webinar series. So this is our third installment with uh, Causa Local founder Ana Maria Cintron. This one's um, going to be titled Financial Vocabulary. What do loans, investments, credit actually mean? Uh, so this is this is uh, I, I think we've said it in the last two um, webinars is a lot of times it's the basics the, that, that people just simply don't understand. So we're going to cover a lot of that. We're going to um, I don't be able to answer questions live. We're going to try to keep it very conversational as always. We don't want to bore you. Uh, we try to keep it to an hour. So um, feel free to utilize the Q&A section um, as, as your questions pop up and we'll go ahead and answer them uh, as we're rolling along. Um, again, um, after the after this webinar uh, is uh, after it's finished, we'll send it to all the people who registered and then also um, if you're an NPR Chamber small business member, all of our videos, webinars, and stuff are always available um, in our member archives. So you can go in and check everything out, and, uh, PDFs, the video uh, version, all that. So it's all there at your fingertips um, at all times for, forever. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and introduce our guest today. So Anna, welcome back. Uh, Getting, uh, getting kind of used to this. Uh. Yes, I'm loving it. It's like, yeah. first we were like very serious and then now we're like, we're used to it. Hello, Conversation, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for, thanks for joining us again. Honestly, I'm extremely happy to be here. We've had really two successful webinars, right? Um, and this is the third one. Uh, and I just love this collaboration. I, and to be totally honest, I've, I've been practicing my English. Like in pandemic, I've like, I'm like, I've lost my English, <laughs> but this has been a great opportunity to not only connect uh, with people all around the United States and you guys, but, you know, just do something different uh, that adds value to all of you, right? Yeah. Uh, just to talk a little bit more uh, about Causa Local, to give a, a brief introduction, Causa Local is a 501c3, um, and its mission is to facilitate access to capital through non-traditional means and ways, right? We work with uh, Kiva and we work with WeFunder and we're starting to also work with Republic. Um, we really, really, uh, you know, love anything that has to do with non-traditional access to capital. We're the only ones and first ones here in Puerto Rico that are talking about that. And, and we've been able to deploy over $3 million. Uh, we're currently working with 352 small business owners. Um, and, you know, we're, we're very excited about that, actually. Like, I was before the call, um, this week has been kind of like a let's, let's pause for a while. And I'm like, you know what? This year was amazing. Like, we did over 100 small business owners. Like, you know, so, you know, we exceeded expectation. The, the team is amazing. I think that we all have a genuine interest in helping small business owners absolutely. grow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and improve everyone's quality of life. So we're really excited about that. Um, I, very small reminder as well. Remember, we have the Verizon campaign running. Uh, Joel was so nice that he prepared a newsletter and he shared it. So you have that in your emails. Check it out. Participate. Register. You could win $10,000. Um, so do that today if you haven't done it. <laughs> also, also, I'm sorry to cut you. Uh, we, oh, no worries. Uh, yeah. We send it out to all our members in our network. And then also like, another thing is if you are a small business member uh, within the, the member portal, uh, along with where you can watch all the old videos, there's a an option to check out different grant opportunities and stuff. And I believe I added it there as well. I believe we added If not, I'll make sure that it's added there so everybody can see the opportunity and make sure you... Uh, yeah, Joel, that's on the website, right? Right? Yeah, on the website. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I have to check out the ground. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Let, me put that. Let me write that down on my 50 to do list for the next yeah. week. <laughs> no, but that was just another thing, just kind of you know, uh, kind of piggybacking on what you were saying is that after we connected, I was. I was I, I had no idea of, of the work you did. I wasn't familiar with any of these alternative forms of capital. So when we when you came on board as a member, I thought it was just I I, I just it was I was determined to make sure we get this message across to small business members. It's a great thing. Thank thing you, thank you. Know, we really need it. Like you, you know? mentioned it, uh, lots yeah. of people don't know yet we exist. Even though you know we've done a lot for the past five years, but we still you know we're just getting started. To be honest. Um, so, you know, wh why, are, why are we here today, right? Uh, let's get down to business. Um, but we're going to talk a, a little bit about financial literacy and certain words, right, that we hear in the everyday lingo that maybe, you know, we hear them, repeat them, but we really don't even know what they mean, right? Um, and I want to start saying, you know, why it's important, why financial literacy is important. 
Uh, nearly half of Americans don't expect to have enough money to retire comfortably. You know, that's, uh, so if you don't die before the age of 40, which, you know, there's a great possibility you won't die, you need retirement money, right? Um, credit card debt has reached its highest point ever. So there's a lot of people living, you know, not with their cash flow, but just with credit card debt, which is not always, you know, that great. And 40% of Americans can't afford a 400 emergency expense. You know, when I read this, I was like, okay, I need to share this today um, because it's just three, you know, reasons why financial literacy is important. And, you know, you may want to hide from your numbers and run away from your bank account, but you can't, and it's there. So it's very important, you know, that today, if you have any questions, doubts, you know, feel free to vent through the chat. Um, so I can imagine that all of you have heard the word APR, annual percentage rate. <laughs> um, it's basically uh, the yearly interest rate charged on borrowed money, right? So next time you hear APR, you already know what it is. The acronym is used a lot. And why is, it, is this important, right? Because when you're financially planning your business or you're even your personal life, if you don't notice that you're paying like a really high interest on a, on a certain balance, that can, that can harm you, right? Or that can benefit you in the sense that you have identified that you're paying a high interest and you don't want to continue paying for it. And you kind of like, you know, juggle with different financial instruments to get the best interest rate that you need, right? Um, another word that is used a lot and I love it. What are your assets? I, I love it when I ask small business owners about their assets. They're like, my assets, well, my money, my cash balance in the bank. Not really. <laughs> an asset is any resource that's of value. Like even if you have jewelry, that's an asset. <laughs> um, so it's very important that that you understand that there's tangible and intangible assets. Uh, just you know, to give you an example, causa local, right? Causa local in itself is an asset. It's an intangible asset that has goodwill, and all that is recorded in your financial statement. So. Next time you hear the word asset, it's anything you have of value, even if it's not at that moment producing cash, but it, it has the, the opportunity to, to be li liquid, right? Um, and then bankruptcy. What is bankruptcy, right? It's a legal status, by the way. Many people don't know that part, including myself. I had to like review it today. I was like, yeah, right. It's a legal status. I forgot. When you declare bankrupt, right? You, you, it's, a, it's a legal form of saying, I cannot continue to pay uh, my obligations and I have to go on a repayment plan and it's not the end of the world, right? But it does have certain negative uh, consequences. If you are in, um, you know, in a, in a bankruptcy, it doesn't mean that you cannot continue to eventually get credit. Many, many people that come to us to apply for Kiva, they ask us, Hey, I've been in a bankruptcy, but I'm already cleared. Right. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've, we figure it out, you know, I'm cleared. Can I, you know, request a loan? And we tell them, yes. If you're currently in the middle of a bankruptcy, it's very difficult to get credit, to be honest. But if you pass that stage, it is totally possible. Um, this one I love, comparison shopping. I think I got this from my father. When you're shopping around for your business, for your personal life, compare prices. Don't, don't settle on last minute things. Sometimes we do that, right? Because time is an issue and I cannot go to like 10 stores to compare the same product. But take advantage of the internet, right? Um, and then calculate those savings on an annual basis. And that's when you like, hey, you know what? I'm saving a thousand here, a thousand there, 5,000 here, 10 million somewhere. And it makes a difference, right? Um, I, could, I could speak to that one just because- Yeah, like, tell us, my, tell us your experience. In my- uh... <laughs> In my, so like I said, um, I, I am a, an insurance broker by, by profession. I own an insurance agent. And that's what we do for our clients is that we have the carriers uh, and we, you know, whether you're a business owner or personal insurance, we do the shopping for you. It saves them a, a ton of time, but it, it, it's worth it uh, because I come from both perspectives. Um, I used to work with, uh, with State Farm where we just had one company. And now I work for a company that has dozens so we're able to, 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 to compare those rates and compare the coverages and stuff like that. And it, it's, it's definitely worth doing it and, and seeing what's out there. I don't think enough people utilize that type of stuff and not just insurance and, and anything, loans and, and, and all that type of stuff as well. Yeah, like I always feel like, you know, compare things, you know, mm -hmm. you know, 
whatever in your life in your lifestyle whatever applies compare things even like personal things yeah absolutely and, and I, don't settle for just like the first one you know <laughs> even it if happens. it's buying a car compare <laughs> So a word that everybody loves, credit. <laughs> I bet all of you have heard that before, uh, for sure. It's a financial arrangement in which money is borrowed for a purchase and paid back at a later date. How do you create credit, right? Because maybe that's where people get a little uh, confused. So with Kiva, you could apply for a very simple, flexible loan that is not based on credit or on your financials necessarily and start creating credit, right? Uh, you can create credit with your credit card if it's under your name, right? You can create credit when you buy things on debt. If you buy your first car, if you buy your first home, if the business uh, buys also a location, um, how that you know business uh, w works with its cash flow versus the debt they have. Um, and I think, you know, it's many people, you know, don't give it the importance that the term has, especially because it has an impact in your life. So it's very important that you follow your credit, understand your credit and grow it. Right. Uh, you don't, you want to eventually buy your own home. Probably you want to eventually buy a car. And if you have a good credit, you will get nicer terms, right? Um, look at right now, PenFed has amazing uh, car loans <laughs> and, and, and you can get loans, you know, at a very low interest rate as well. Um, and that helps you grow your financials and also grow your business, right? And one then- thing that I see, One thing that I see a lot uh, we're dealing with business owners, especially a lot of people who are starting out even more on the, like the mom and pop type of level mm -hmm. is they don't really understand business credit. They and when you, you kind of go in and look at their books and they, they they finance their entire business on personal credit cards, more you know, mortgage their house, this and that. So I think that that's something that's important too to understand yes. that your your business entity can create credit and have a credit score and, and all that type of stuff. I think that I think that's a whole other webinar, honestly. Yeah, no, no, but I'm so sorry you did bring it up. Uh many people call it the three C's, the five C's, um, mm -hmm. you know, how to create credit, right? Capital, etc. And I think it's important that you that at least you understand from today is that you have your own personal credit and then the organization has another credit, right? The business credit, because a lot of people don't understand that. So you can get a loan on, on, on behalf of your business and on yourself. And if I were you, honestly, if you have cash flow, don't liquidate it completely in your business, you know? Um, you know, maintain that cash flow. Um, I know this may sound exaggerated, but at least maintain cash flow in case you're, you know, cashless for the next six months or one year. You know, you will have a lot of peace of mind. And you can even invest that cash flow at the same time and then take it out when you need it. Um, and so, the, yes, there's a lot of financial instruments nowadays for businesses. Try them out, use them, and don't carry all the weight on your back, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So another one in, in that, you know, in that, um, while we're at it, it's credit score, right? It's a three digit number that represents how likely a borrower is to repay a debt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all know that 500 is not a great credit score and 800 is the best. So monitor it. You know, there's a lot of, of websites uh, online that are shady, but there's also the ones that are for real that give you your, your correct credit score. And it's something you can check annually. It's not to check it every day, right? But just, you know, be on the lookout for it. I usually check it every two years if there's nothing major in my in my life or or in, in the business, right? Uh, and then one that we love is a debit card. <laughs> We love to use it, right? Uh, it's not a credit card because it's not backed up by like a balance that you have access to, but a, credit, a debit card is like an ATM, right? And it's a card you use that has cash, right? You put $500 in it, you have $500 to spend it. It's a great way for you uh, to also receive payments. So if you're a business owner and you're listening to us, you should have that option, right? Uh, most small businesses already have that. Nowadays, it's very unlikely that you hear that a business only accepts cash, right? But it happens. Uh, and it's always good to have, you know, more than one option. Um, we have what's, you know, debt. What's debt, right? We, we hear the word debt and it's like a loan. 
uh, but it's really money that a borrower owes to a le lender. It can be a person or organization. <laughs> um, so for example, Kiva uh, is, 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 Kiva is a loan, it's, a, it's debt, right? It's a 0% interest. Usually it's, it's instruments that have interest rates. Um, we funder, for example, it's raising capital, which is a whole, that's, that's a whole other webinar, to be honest, but you yes. have to start getting familiar with we funder and platforms like that, that help you raise money, uh, that it's not necessarily a loan that you repay every month. Right. So it's important that, that, you know, that these options are available and that vocabulary is out there. <laughs> so we have, so we have a question. So Amy asked, um, is credit karma, uh, shady or is it okay? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on credit karma? I personally use it actually. Yeah, I actually it. credit karma even has like all these reports and they help you like they give you tips. They give you pointers on how to create credit. So yeah. I have a lot of small business owners that use credit karma and they love it. <laughs> I think it's a good, I think it's a good guideline. I know I, I, because I know they, they only have, if I'm not mistaken, I think they only have two of the credit bureaus on there, not the third one. I forget which one. It's probably like TransUnion and Equifax are on there, and then the other one, Experian, I think, might not be on there. I forget exactly which ones, but I think yeah. it's I think it's I think it's, good, I think it's a good tool as like a guide, maybe mm -hmm. to like give you a ballpark, but yes. um, it's not the end all be all. I don't think you know. So but that's my that's my take on it. And they all, they have really good content. Mm -hmm. Like they have, like they issue reports with tips and tricks, and you know, I I think it's good. It's free. It's a good tool. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. Yeah. I would recommend it. Um, there's a couple others like Credit Karma, um, but but I I feel like the the important thing is to just you know choose one that's legible because there's also lots of like phony emails and you know like phishing spam. Um, so beware of that. <laughs> but it's important that you know you check your credit. Uh, and, and you work to create credit as well. Um, I think one of the things I remember growing up, like like that, it was almost like taboo to, to, to check your credit. Like, you know, like there was always that myth that if you checked it too ooh, much, you looked into, ooh, you know, you're going to lose. It's like, oh, you don't look at, you know. The thing is that, that yeah, I, 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 I am going to explain why that taboo, by the way, okay. that if oh, a great. financial institution checks your credit score and they check it a lot, your credit score is lowered. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I have very little, but it's it's lowered a, a bit. A little bit. It, it does uh -huh. get it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why it's like, uh, don't check your credit score all the time. And I think that taboo comes from that a uh, mindset. Is but um, it's <laughs> yes, I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so this is one of my favorites: diversification. Right. Um. It's a core principle of investing. And it's so important that we think about this all the time. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. For example, I'm a nonprofit. I receive grants. I receive income from services we provide. I, you know, so I'm, I'm there practicing diversification, right? Um, I, I love that term. I, I believe it super works, especially in moments like the ones we're living in, right? The only constant is change and everything's always changing and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So it's very important that you diversify, you know, your income, your expenses, your vendors, your clients. What if you have one client and then that client closes, then your business is done, right? It's not sustainable. So, you know, it's a strategy to reduce the overall risk of loss. Very important one. How, how, I, um, how I can relate to that, uh, it kind of goes back to my insurance business is um primarily from our commercial um business owners um book of business so you know we write commercial commercial insurance for business owners so when our our mindset for diversification is to have different sectors uh that we insure because we i i, I know personally some agents that hone in on one sector let's call it contractors or you know uh, you, you know trades type of people and that's the majority of their book and then what happened what we saw was at, during the pandemic when a lot of those people weren't working they took a hit because a lot of those policies were canceling they kind of had all their eggs in one basket on one specific mm -hmm. sector and they, they they took a hit whereas if you have a well diversified book of, of business that's that's my example of how i can relate that oh, that's why, a great why it's example. important that's a great example. I mean? and, I, and i like that we pause in this term because it's like maybe it's obvious, but it's not. It's like every day I hear that people are not diversified, and yeah. it's so important. Like, 
everything it affects everything it's like money exactly. yeah it, no exactly yeah, it so. goes parallel like oh. diversify your money and take your money out out, out. <laughs> exactly another one that i love and i bet in puerto rico you know the statistics of, of this number frustrates me so much it's an emergency fund like i mentioned you should have like three months or six months minimum of fixed expenses you know to live in case somebody loses a job in case the business goes down there's a fire whatever <laughs> um you know and and that's really important to especially with pandemia with uh you know with all the hurricanes and earthquakes and mother nature and etc so if you don't have an emergency fund get to it right now don't tell me you don't have money you know sacrifice not going out one friday night or buying one thing on in the internet or even like just do a garage sale and, and start an emergency fund just start it and then you'll continue i know it's the most difficult part is starting it starting um but yes say there's always going to be unexpected costs and expenses that you need to cover And that's why it's useful, right? Mm. And who doesn't know what income is? <laughs> um, you know, income is money received through sources such as employment, uh, investments, or business transactions, right? Uh, it's basically, you know, what we use. Uh, it's a type of exchange. Huh. Uh, it's the, you know, the middle of the transaction, the, the most important part. Um, and that's income, right? Uh, we, you know, it loses value, it gets value. Um, in the case, for example, of Kiva, you know, Kiva gives you at 0% interest money and that income, you know, you, you, you finish repaying the same amount of money. So technically, you know, you're, you're even better off because you're eventually paying even a little less because of the, you know, the time value of money. So something to consider. Um, so, we a, so we got a question, another question. Um, yes. going back, Ooh, to, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we got active, we got active crowd today. Um, what is a healthy number for an emergency fund? I'm not sure if you, you had touched mm -hmm. uh, like a healthy number, like a healthy amount. Like what, what should a business be looking to set aside for uh, when it comes to emergency fund? What well, just it all depends on your business, right? But calculate, you know, your expenses for the next six months or three months, right? And your and your obligations, especially. Mm -hmm. Um, so obligations can be a loan that you have to repay, expenses that you know that you need to cover. For example, the buying of inventory. If your business is selling inventory and you don't have money to buy the inventory, then you have no business, you know, because you buy the inventory, you sell it, you buy, you sell it. It's like a cycle. So make sure, you, you know, you have that cash flow cycle internally figured out and you understand it and you have the money to cover it. And it's okay to get lines of credit, to get a Kiva, to get WeFunder or to go to the bank or cooperativa to manage that cash flow, right? It's like people literally have a credit lines to manage cash flow situations. Because sometimes you buy your inventory and you don't sell it, you know, until the next six months and you have to juggle with that like timeline aspect of it, okay? So make sure you have the three to six months ideally of obligations and expenses, right? Um, A concept that's very important, it's need versus want, right? Um, and that's really common in, in your personal finances and in your business finance as well. Um, and you need to dif differentiate, right? A need is something that, you know, a, lo a loan repayment, you have to do it. A want is maybe an investment that you want to work on in the future to eventually, you know, uh, grow the business, but it's not tied directly to your business income generating model, right? Um, in personal life, ask yourself that question before, you know, you go shopping every day or once periodically. We, you know, we're, we live in a very consumerist lifestyle and, and world. And, and so basically, you don't need the half of the things that you have. So next time, you know, you're going to buy something, really ask yourself, do I really need this or I just want it? <laughs> uh, and it's going to help you with that emergency fund I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Um, very important pay yourself first <laughs> and we are all you know we are all guilty of start including myself <laughs> um but you have to you know it's your business you have to pay yourself first if you have to manage a business with one person yourself that's fine mm -hmm. and you know there's a it, it, there's a lot of people that are always like you have to grow you have to hire employees but if you cannot pay them don't do it <laughs> right. because then you're going to add yourself like a you know additional stress factor um So it's very important you include yourself in that budget. Were you going to say something, Joel Perlon? 
No, no, just I, you know, I agree. I agree with that. What do you think of um, kind of going back? I, I've heard this before. I'd like to get your opinion on it. Uh, prioritizing mm-hmm. paying off debt. Kind of, it kind of goes back to the the emergency fund you're talking about. Um, I've heard people say you should prioritize paying off the debt that you're paying at an interest rate versus putting money away in emergency fund. What are your What are your thoughts on that? On how to prioritize that? Well, really, Rome was not built in a day, and it's okay right. when you begin something and you're you know you're covering needs and you don't you barely have for that emergency fund, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you know if this is more like a personal opinion, right? Because it's not based on scientific mm-hmm. evidence, but um, I would pay the higher interest payments first and just, you know, get them done. Because remember that at the end of the day, if you Mila, did, this, did things accordingly, you've got a loan or you've got a financial instrument to invest. So to grow, right, to grow the business, to generate more income. So as soon as you are able to limit your expenses and then generate more income, you'll be able to then do both, right? Uh, continue to pay obligations and create that emergency fund. So there's not really a right answer, right? But just, you know, you know your finances, you know what your expenses and income are, prioritize those two, right? And if you have, you need an additional job, then, you know, bring, bring start, you know, have an additional job. That's nothing wrong. Uh, I remember when I started Causa Local, it's not until 2020, I became full time. I was not full time. I had another job. Yeah, yeah. I think so, that's the story you know, of most most people. I think at one point. And it's sacrifices you make along the way because it's like an investment for the future. Don't think of everything at the moment. No, absolutely. I'll be better in the next year, in the next six months. Um, so you know, those are my two cents on that. <laughs> oh, great! Thank you. And then principal uh, is the the balance, right? The the amount due. Uh, on a loan before interest. So basically, if I give you $10,000 at 3% interest, then the, the principal is $10,000 and the interest 3%, right? Um, last but not least, <laughs> uh, time value of money. And I'm, I'm gonna read this one because I really love this concept. And I think not lots of people you know, understand it. Mm. Money has value, right? You can have $5 today and it's not gonna be worth the same in the next five years. So time value of money is a concept that money available now is worth more than an identical amount in the future. <laughs> this is because money that's invested has the potential to grow and the longer that it's invested, the more it will appreciate. Mm. Money that's acquired later has less time to grow through investment and is thus considered less valuable, right? Yeah. So something to think about, right? If I have ten dollars in my bank account today, or a hundred thousand, it it will. If I don't do anything with it, it's gonna lose value, right? Mm-hmm. And I bet lots of you are thinking of you know different EDAs. You know when it's tax season and you take out an EDA, and then you're like, okay, this EDA is not generating interest. <laughs> then you're gonna move your money, or it's losing value, right? Because that's how it works. Um, until now, are there are there other additional questions? Yeah. No, it looks like we're good. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the subject a little bit. Uh, we, we've been talking about some vocabulary, some content, and I really, you know, I, I wanted to review a few of them that are very important, but I also then wanted to, you know, change the subject a little bit since we're in the holiday planning. And the no holiday planning, no holiday already passed, but we're in the, like, holiday season, right? We got right. We had Christmas, the Happy New Year's, Three Kings, you know, and what are the things that, you know, you can plan to do like a smart and intelligent Christmas shopping. It, it, maybe it's for like personal or business, but things that you can have in mind. So I do, do want to, you know, take some space to give you a few tips and tricks uh, of, you know, things you should ask yourself before, you know, getting in debt. The holidays are usually associated with a lot of expenses and it shouldn't, <laughs> right? Um, so if you're, if you're in this holiday season planning to borrow, here are five blunders to avoid, right? And blunders are like mistakes, right? So you have this list of things you want to buy. And, you know, you can apply this to your daily business monthly list, right, of expenses. Um, <laughs> and don't overdoing credit cards. It's not good. Like we mentioned, credit cards usually 
they're good for like, you know, for example, I use them on a monthly basis and I repay them. I use them, repay them. That's, yeah, that's, that's what fine. I do. Too. That, that's no problems. You accumulate points, you get benefits, cool. But what happens when you use your credit card and you can't repay it for a year? So it affects your credit and it affects your lifestyle, your eventual mm -hmm. financial benefits. So try not to get like your credit gets credit cards packed, you know. Um, yeah. I was hearing, I was, I was, I was reading the other days. And somebody asked, um, is it is it bad that I spend five hundred dollars on a bad bunny ticket <laughs> ticket? And I'm like, it's not bad, right? If you have it. If but you if you're it. not paying your rent or not, you're not buying groceries <laughs> to buy this ticket, then you cannot afford it. <laughs> and if you want to make more money, then get another job, yeah. you know? Um <laughs> so you know, credit cards usually have, have really high interest rates. So you may have, a, you spend 5,000 and you end up paying almost the double because of credit card interest. So be very careful with that, you know, this holiday season, the next one, and just monitor that in, in your lifestyle, right? Um, yeah, you don't want to get, you don't want to get caught in that, that minimum payment. Um, that, that's what they're hoping, man. You that's, get that so balance right no, up. Credit cards are a business, right? And they're yeah, making yeah. a business off of you, but don't let them make a huge business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do, I, I do similar to you, like, you know, kind of I'll pay monthly expenses and stuff and pay it off pretty immediately using a credit card. Yeah, you know, you get, yeah, get the points and the travel miles and that type of stuff. Yes. But I try yes. not to keep balances on there because I'm just I'm me personally I'm I'm I've always been real uh risk avert like averse to that, that type of, of debt and, and keeping those high balances. So I avoid it like the plague. But yeah, no, I think that was that's a great point. I totally get you. I, I've been <laughs> the same way and honestly I don't like I don't regret it. Yeah, no, same. It gives me peace of mind. Um, so, okay, another one. Like, follow your budget. Don't don't go off your book. If you have a budget and you have a list of things you know you need and you know you need to, you know, buy, stick to that. You know, we, we are bombarded every day by social media, marketing, etc. And, you know, if it's up to them, you buy the whole world, but don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then another one that I really like is don't spend money you don't have, right? Um, like the example I said about Bad Bunny. Uh, don't feel guilty also in spending the money you have. Like if you work for it and, you know, you think you can afford it, then do it. But if you don't, then, you know, rent, groceries, health insurance, that's more important and that's priority. Um, and that's, you know, that's an investment in your quality of life and, and in, you know, your surroundings. And this one, buying gifts for people that, you know, they don't need gifts or you don't need to buy gifts to everyone, right? Um, and I know it's the holidays and maybe you want to be thankful, but even nowadays, you know, you can send e-cards, you can send a candy cane. You don't have to, you know, spend a lot of money in gifts. Uh, and, and literally, like I was reading some statistics the other day about how much people are spending for the holidays and it's just like crazy. You know, you can show your love and you don't have to give a gift every time. <laughs> I was watching, uh, it was funny, I was watching a, a random TikTok video, and the guy said the same thing. He's like, I, I like, you're better off, just don't give me anything. Just come in, you know, wish me Merry Christmas and give me a hug. I know you bought that 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 gift or whatever. You bought it last minute at, at the thrift store, at CVS or something. You didn't put any effort into it or anything like that. So why bother? Just come in, you know, happy to see you, a hug, and, and, and Merry Christmas and keep it moving, you know? <laughs> I love that. Just stop yeah. giving just to give out. Just, like, yeah, giving no. just to give. Yeah, like it's unnecessary. You're spending money that you don't need to. I don't need the gift. You didn't really want to get it for me anyway, so why, why do we need to go why through spend? this? Why spend? <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. We yeah. should definitely share that tiktok later on yeah yeah <laughs> um and the last one is bor borrowing from yourself mm. like exactly don't tap into your emergency fund to like buy gifts for the holidays you know even get creative like now with the internet even a phone call just give time give experiences that maybe don't cost a lot of money right mm. um so you know I, that's something that i did want to share with you um i think you know it's you know it's something we read about but we definitely don't uh follow sometimes and we get like all rushed up in the holiday season and you know that's not great um and then some other holiday budgeting tips that i do want to share with you um that are also applicable to like any day of the year um when you're going out make sure to make like a list of things you need right and that helps you like just randomly choose 
all the things you want and then put them in the cart and then no oh, oops i i came in buying one thing and then i finished with 10 things i don't need so just make a list and stick to it you know organize yourself Absolutely. um and avoid the last minute holiday craze uh, i know this sounds crazy but in january i start planning the holidays for 2022 <laughs> Because then when the holidays come, I am no, you will see me no, nowhere inside in any store and you're more relaxed and you're, you're literally uh, more at peace to enjoy the holidays. Um, yeah. all, and this holiday season, all my friends were like, I'm in the last, I'm in the hour of four hours buying something. Don't do that. You don't have the time or the energy or the money to waste. So yeah. don't, right? You should be focused on your business and on your things. Uh, and this can happen anytime, you know, overall, just don't leave things for last minute because you can end up paying more. And many stores also, you, um, when you buy inventory, for example, and you buy them beforehand, they give you a discount. So kind of like take advantage of those tricks. Um, let's see. I know I'm guilty of that one. I'm guilty of that one. Every, <laughs> every year, like, oh, we're gonna, I talk to my wife and I'm like, all right, we're going to start at least in the summertime, like by the sign, the end of the summer, we're going to start. And by the time we get to Halloween or Thanksgiving, we're done. Mm -hmm. It never happens. And then, you know, <laughs> then you're rushing in November. And December. then you're rushing and then you don't enjoy it. And then things happen too. Like you yeah, get sick or you get the flu or exactly, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> or you have to cook. Uh, so I'm, I'm no. guilty of that one. Yeah. So well, no, you have to apply it then. I'll, I'll check on you next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Something that I've already mentioned, but I, I want to re-mention, strive for cash only, right? Don't buy it if you don't have the money. You know, don't get in debt to buy things that you don't need. Uh, I understand that in a business, you sometimes need to buy things that you do need, mm -hmm. and that's fine. You can play there with different financial instruments like credit cards, loans, credit lines, you know. Uh, you can have a mixture of everything. Um I think that, that kind of goes hand in hand with the planning ahead, because if you're starting early, now you have that cash. Now you have that disposable yes. income where as opposed to waiting until December, now you're, you're starting to rack up the credit cards because you're getting it all, you know, like, you know, like, so exactly. I, See, it's that, like, I leave it all for the end and then yeah. I have to spend that thousand dollars and you, yeah, I don't have the ten thousand dollars and you have to pay interest. So uh -huh. you end up paying like twenty thousand dollars for gifts or whatever. Exactly. Don't do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. All these things, I'm giving it like a holiday theme, but they apply, they apply for your yeah. everyday, okay? For your everyday lifestyle, business planning, etc. So don't think it's just the holidays, right? Absolutely. And then, and then uh, last, you know, we're almost uh, finishing the finish, uh, arriving to the finish line. Sorry. See, I forget my English. I've forgotten <laughs> my English. Uh, we're almost getting to the end of this, but very important. Uh, you know, avoid unnecessary expenses. I'm going to use the holiday example, but remember this applies for everything. Avoid expensive gift wrapping, for example. Like, like I've seen like, I oh, yeah, pay $15 to gift wrap. I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> like, no, <laughs> you know, like, so get creative, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, think outside the box uh, and try to save money so you can, you know, inject into that emergency fund. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's wonderful. Yes. And Joel, this concludes uh, this, this, this topic, at least. I, I did want to be a little precise because I know it's the holiday season and people are all in about. Um, Let's get checked out. Yeah, we were talking so about that before we got on the call. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just like a small teaser of things you should be, you know, on the lookout for and know your vocabulary. And when you don't know it, look it up and understand it or ask, ask us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's what that, that's what we're here for. And um, no, it was helpful. I learned some some stuff that even I wasn't too sure about. Let me see if I got a, got a question. Mira, eh, Aime, que por fin la, she's online. And, and que bueno, Aime, te estoy saludando. <laughs> Happy holidays, she's online. Okay, yeah. I just saw the part of the Q&A. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So, so she asked, um, she, she well, mentioned she said, about. Passive income is good for emergency funds. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um, so kind of, so real quick, um, kind of going along that point of diversification, uh, I just kind of mm -hmm. wanted to mention uh, a partnership that the chamber launched. So we, we partnered with a, um, a payment processing company called OpenNode. So what they are, uh, open, open Node. 
So okay. their payment, they, they process payments and, and what, what they allow um, small businesses to do is um, accept payments, uh, accept Bitcoin payments for their business. Oh, okay. So it's really, it's really cool because um, one, it, for the business, it allows you to accept another revenue stream. So it's another opportunity for somebody to support your business. Um, and what, what we like about it is that in, in our experience, there's a lot of, so we work with a lot of small businesses that maybe obviously don't have an understanding of what Bitcoin is or cryptocurrency or anything like that. And that's yeah. perfectly fine because with this platform, they can accept the, the payment in Bitcoin from the consumer and then mm -hmm. through the platform convert it into to US dollars and that's what they can take on. So you're allowing a consumer to patronize your business by means that they want to how they want to spend the money and then you can accept it the way you want to. So we find that to kind of open up an entire world of possibilities for, for small businesses to be able to accept new forms of payment, uh, to diversify their funds because they might say, hey, I don't really understand it, but maybe I'm going to keep a portion of this over here in Bitcoin or something for mm -hmm. a rainy day or something like that. So it's just something that we are really excited about. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it, it just opens up a, a world of possibilities for small businesses businesses to be able to, like you said, diversify and have other revenue streams and stuff like that. So there'll be more to come there. Um, we, sh we probably will be doing some, some educational stuff uh, regarding that and all that, but any questions or anything like that, you know, just, just let me know, but that we're excited about that. So. That sounds amazing. And remember to check out the Verizon uh, opportunity. And yes, they have yeah. some really, gonna... really good uh, tools also, digital tools. Um, so they have like amazing resources. So check it out and register for a chance to win ten thousand dollars. Absolutely, and, and and thank you again uh, for for joining us for the of for the course. series. Before the the webinar started, we were just talking about how we how we have other stuff in store for for the beginning of, of the new year. So, like we always say, be on the lookout. You know, follow our newsletter, visit our website, and stuff like that. I put the the website links in the in the chat. Um, and then besides that, I think we're, we're pretty much, uh, pretty much good to go. Huh? Did you have anything else? Any last uh, words or anything? Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy holidays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So happy enjoy this year. week, this, this week, the, this is the week I always say is like, uh, nobody knows exactly what we're supposed exactly. to be doing this week. So I saw my the other days and I love it. It's like, I don't know what yeah. day it is. I don't know what time. I don't know what day it is. What time. So I, what my, my recommendation, everybody take, try to take a little bit of time to decompress, yeah. kind of take in uh, you know the year that passed and, and kind of get ready for the new year but uh but yeah so uh, we looked at we looked yeah there you go that's not that's perfect I'm thinking I, uh, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm so, coughing this weekend next yeah week. exactly <laughs> i'm thinking <laughs> so uh, again thanks everybody for joining us and then we look forward to seeing you guys at the next webinar hopefully uh in january we'll have a nice lineup of stuff for everybody so yes Happy, happy holidays and happy new happy year i make it one more day <laughs> <laughs> all right november Bye.